the population P obeys the logistic growth model. It satisfies the differential equation given here. We're asked to determine the intervals of P for which the population is increasing, as well as for the intervals for which it's decreasing. Then we're asked to find P of 64 given P of zero equals four. So we just solved this problem, and for part C, we actually took the time to solve this differential equation, which was fairly time consuming. In this example, we'll use the shortcut method to find the solution to the differential equation using our notes here on the right. But for a quick review, the given differential equation is an autonomous differential equation because it's in the form of dp dt equals f of p, meaning the derivative dp dt is equal to a function of only p, and the independent variable t only appears in the derivative. The equilibrium solutions occur where the derivative is equal to zero, and where the derivative is positive or greater than zero, p is increasing, and where the derivative is negative or less than zero, p is decreasing. So to answer part a and b, let's first find the equilibrium solutions. So we'll set the derivative equal to zero and solve for p. That would give us the equation zero equals three divided by 1,100 times p times the quantity 11 minus p. Well notice how this product is equal to zero when p equals zero or when p equals 11. But notice how we're told p is greater than zero, which means you want to find the sign of the derivative over two open intervals, where the first open interval would be from zero to 11, and the second open interval would be from 11 to infinity. So again, if we can determine the sign of the derivative, dp dt, over these intervals, we can determine where p is increasing and where it's decreasing. So for the test value in this first interval, let's select p equals one. Notice when p is equal to one, we'd have three divided by 1,100 times one times 10, which is positive. So because dp dt is positive over this interval, dp dt is increasing over this entire interval. And now for this interval, let's select p equals 12. When p is 12, we'd have dp dt equals three divided by 1,100 times 12 times negative one, which would give us a negative value for dp dt, which means the population is decreasing over this entire interval. So for part A, we'll say the population is increasing when p is greater than zero and less than 11, and we'll say the population is decreasing when p is greater than 11. And now again, to find part C, we'll be using our notes here on the right to use a shortcut to find the solution to the given differential equation. Where differential equation in this form here has a solution p of t given here. But notice how the given differential equation is not quite in this form because here we have the quantity 11 minus p, and here we have the quantity one minus p divided by k. So we'll have to change the form of the differential equation to fit this form, then we'll identify p sub zero, k and r, and write our solution in this form. Let's work on this on the next slide. To make the given differential equation fit this form here, we want to focus on this term, which must be equal to one. And right now, notice how it's 11. Well, we can't just divide the right side by 11, so what we'll do is multiply by 11 over 11, which is equal to one. So we're going to have dp dt equals 11 divided by 11 times the right side of the equation. And now from here, let's break up this fraction. Let's write the right side as dp dt equals, let's write this as 11 times three divided by 1,100, and then times one eleventh p times the quantity 11 minus p. So again, we still have the fraction 11 over 11. We just wrote it as two separate terms. This will give us the p dt equals 11 and 1100 simplify. There's 111 11 and 100 and 1100. And from here, we'll distribute the 1 11th and leave the factor of p there. So we have three hundredths times p times 1 11 times 11 is one, and then we'd have minus p divided by 11. 
Notice how now the differential equation fits this form and therefore we can identify R and K. And remember we were also told that P of zero equals four. So from the given differential equation and the initial condition, we know P of zero equals four. We know R, which is the intrinsic growth rate, which means the growth rate without constraints is three hundredths. And we know K, the carrying capacity, is this denominator here, which is eleven. So the particular solution to the given differential equation is P of T equals, the numerator is K times P sub zero, which is eleven times four, forty-four, divided by the quantity P sub zero, which is four, plus K minus P sub zero, would be eleven minus four, seven, times E, raised to the power of negative RT, which is negative three divided by one hundred times T. So this is the particular solution to the given differential equation. But remember part C actually asks us to find P of sixty-four. So to find P of sixty-four, we substitute sixty-four for T. So we have forty-four divided by the quantity four plus seven times E, raised to the power of negative three hundredths times sixty-four. So going to the calculator, we have forty-four divided by open parenthesis four plus seven times E, raised to the power of negative three hundredths, or negative three divided by one hundred, times sixty-four, right arrow, close parenthesis, and enter. So P of sixty-four is approximately eight point seven five four zero. So if you did watch the other video where we actually solved the differential equation using separation of variables and partial fraction and decomposition, we obtained the same particular solution as well as the same function value for P of sixty-four. This video shows the shortcut using this form of the differential equation that models logistic growth with the solution being in this form here. I hope you found this helpful.